the history of warfare has been marked by a constant drive for technological innovation, and the mid-20th century was no exception. World War II saw the rapid development of various military technologies, including aircraft, tanks, and notably, missiles. Among these groundbreaking developments, the KI-148 experimental missile stands as an example of the ingenuity and ambition of its time. This missile, shrouded in secrecy and often overshadowed by more famous counterparts, played a pivotal role in early development of guided weaponry. In this video, I will delve into the fascinating story of the KI-148, exploring its development, design, testing, and legacy. To understand the significance of the KI-148, we must first place it within its historical context. The mid-20th century was a period of intense global conflict and technological advancement. World War II witnessed the emergence of new and devastating weaponry. One of these new technologies was the Mitsubishi KI-48, codenamed Lily by the Allies, which was a versatile medium bomber used by the Japanese Imperial Army during World War II. It was designed to address the pressing military need for a capable and adaptable bomber in the Asia-Pacific theater. The need for the KI-48 arose due to several factors. Japan was engaged in conflicts across the Asia-Pacific region, including the invasion of China, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific Islands. These campaigns required an aircraft capable of effectively bombing ground targets, supporting ground troops, and conducting reconnaissance. The Japanese military also needed an aircraft that could perform a variety of roles, including level bombing, dive bombing, and ground attack missions. The KI-48's adaptability allowed it to excel in different combat scenarios, making it a valuable asset in diverse theaters of operation. On top of all of that, Japan faced a shortage of medium bombers that could carry substantial bomb loads. The KI-48 filled this gap by offering a platform capable of carrying a diverse array of munitions, making it suitable for a wide range of missions. One of these missions was the classified testing of one of Japan's most advanced and secret technologies. With their ally Nazi Germany building the V-1 and V-2 rockets, and using them to devastating effect, the Japanese military had a growing interest in their own research and development of similar ideas. Enter the KI-148. The development of the KI-148 missile was shrouded in secrecy, as was the case with many military projects during the war. The focus for the KI-148 came from the use of the Special Attack, or more popularly but inaccurately known as Kamikaze in the West, which was considered to be wasteful in the long run and ultimately unsuccessful due to the planes being shot down before they even reached their targets. As such, a guided munition was put into development in an attempt to solve that issue. Major Takeo Omori from the 1st Army Aeronautical Research Laboratory designed the preliminary radio control and stabilization systems for the missiles. Developed alongside its sister project, the KI-147, the KI-148 was a simple radio-controlled guided bomb, propelled by a rocket engine generating 330 pounds of thrust for up to 80 seconds propelling it at 550 kilometers an hour with a maximum speed of 650 kilometers per hour and a range of 11 kilometers. It had a length of 4.09 meters with a wingspan of 2.6 meters and a height of 0.9 meters. It weighed 680 kilograms when fully loaded and was designed to carry a high explosive anti-tank warhead. Compared to the radio-controlled KI-147, the KI-148 was physically smaller and carried a 300 kg warhead versus the 800 kg warhead of the 147. The smaller KI-148 was chosen as the better overall missile, due to the fact that more units could be produced compared to the KI-147. Like the development of any experimental weapon, especially one as groundbreaking as the KI-148, it necessitated extensive testing and trials. Starting in November 1944, drop testing was done with the KI-147 model initially held off the coast of Choshi, where gliding and powered flight was tested. Around the same time, testing started with the KI-148 model. After those were tested, secondary testing focusing on the accuracy of the radio guidance was done. Issues observed during testing, and noted by civilian engineer Nagamori at the end of the war in an interview with the American military, was that the servo motors would act up near the end of flight. 
This was owed to poor production and minuscule design flaws that had been overlooked. While it was being improved, as were all aspects of the prototype series, an incident occurred with a KI-148 missile in February of 1945. Right near the end of the testing, at the town of Atami, a missile at the end of its flight had the guidance system malfunction and caused it to go off course. It struck the Tamami Rikoyan hot springs and in, and killed a maid while injuring one of the bathing customers and causing serious damage to the inn itself. The missile affectionately received the name of Aerobomb after the incident, named after the woman it had killed. There were numerous other locations it was tested at, including Agijaro Beach in the suburbs of Mito City and Manazuru Beach in Kanagawa Prefecture. There was one more evolution of the missile, coming in the form of the Igo-1 Model 1C, but information on it is scarce. From what little I can gather, it was designed by the Tokyo Imperial University's Aeronautical Institute and then tested in the spring of 1945. The difference between it and earlier models came from the guidance system. Instead of using radio guidance, it used an acoustic seeker. This guided it towards sounds, specifically that of a ship's guns, which drastically improved the accuracy and practicality of the weapon. Halting of the development of the IGO-1 series at the end of the war prevented it from seeing any more progress, and since it never received a KI designation, from what I can tell, it was never accepted into production. Anyways, in operation, the missile was to be released 11 kilometers from the target at an altitude of 500 meters to a kilometer, and the mothership was to follow the missile to ensure radio connection. The missile would then be lowered to an altitude of 30 to 100 meters, leveling out 5 kilometers away from its target. When the mothership reached 4 kilometers away from the target, the missile should have struck. The intended targets were battleships, aircraft carriers, cruisers, and other large targets. Despite the successes seen with the missile, development was halted. This was due to several reasons. Japan's collapsing industry and the lack of resources, but most importantly due to how deadly American flak is. Owing to the advanced fire control and proximity fuses, it was likely the mothership would be shot down before they would even be able to release their missiles. The air raids directly caused the testing to halt in the summer of 1945 due to how frequent they were. And like the advanced tanks they had developed, the produced missiles were held in reserve for the invasion of Japan that would never come. The fate of the missiles saw all of the models being destroyed before American forces could acquire them. All drawings and information on the missiles would come from what little documents that survived on it, and surviving engineers who worked on it like Hayashi, Nagamori, Rita, and Nikura. It is to note that Japan received no assistance from Germany, and the missile held no ties to the Fritz X. Sadly, as most experimental ideas from Japan in World War II end up, at the end of the war, most of these guided missiles were destroyed, and despite how many were initially manufactured, almost none survived to this day. The KI-148's journey from its secretive development to its eventful tests mirrors the broader Japanese endeavor to push the boundaries of what was possible. Its unique features and capabilities, though sometimes ahead of its time, contributed valuable lessons to the evolution of guided weaponry. While the KI-148 may not have enjoyed the same fame as some of its contemporaries, it has rightfully earned its place among them as a remarkable achievement in the realm of experimental missiles and early guided weaponry. It serves as a reminder that even in the darkest hours of conflict, the human spirit can ignite the flames of ingenuity, leading to the creation of extraordinary and forward-thinking solutions. The KI-148, a forgotten marvel of its time, deserves recognition as a symbol of innovation amidst adversity and a testament to the unyielding human drive for progress. Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. While you're down there, consider leaving a like or even subscribing as it really helps the almighty YouTube algorithm show my content to others. Speaking of content, you can find more of mine above if you would like to check it out, and if not, then once again I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next video.